Hello, this is me editing right now. Um, I'm just going to record some audio over this footage of uh, me showcasing the outfit I made during this tutorial. Um, <laughs> my starting footage got corrupted, so uh, I now have to record it by myself. Basically, this is just an updated tutorial on how to port Sims 4 meshes to Mass Effect 3 as my previous one was incredibly outdated and I have learned a lot since then. Um, so yeah, that's uh, really all I had to say. This is the thing we made. If you want to see how to do that, you gotta watch the video. And yeah, I hope you enjoy and uh, let my future self explain things to you. Bye! Alright, um, so we go into Sims 4 Studios, oops, we go into Sims 4 Studios, um, we select a mesh that we wish to extract from a package, I will for simplicity's sake be working with, let's see, um, hmm. This mesh, which we will export by simply clicking export. Um, one really important thing is you are going to need the Sims Ball, <laughs> the Sims Ball, the Sims Ball base game. Otherwise, this method will not work. You're going to need the Sims Ball um, so that when you export your mesh, you also get the skeleton. This is really important. Otherwise, you will not be able to do what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial and you're just gonna, you know, struggle. So yeah. Okay. So I also export the... Oh, this is nice. Purple. Um, export PNG, but we also need some pants. So let's go into package find some pants for this mesh mm -hmm. I wonder if I'll cut here probably not do I have the daisy pixel pants already? wrong mesh. Here we go. Oh, I do. Don't I? Oh, I do. Okay. So, once we have all our meshes exported that we wish to use, um, you're still going to need to have 2.7 version of Blender installed, but you're not going to be actually opening it or anything. You're just going to need it for the Sims 4 uh, mesh extraction. Um, so the first thing I'll do is I'll load up my exported meshes one by one. I delete the lamps and the camera. Then I go to export, uh, FBX export. You, I've already done this, but you will need to have these settings. No um, object types besides amateur mesh and others. Your geometry should be set to smoothing edge and your armature shouldn't have any extra things here. It should not have add leaf bones. Normally that's enabled. Anyway, um, we're going to repeat the same process for my other thing off the shoulder. Here we go. You delete these and then you export. 
I just have this set up as a preset, you can do that easily, it really speeds up the process. So you have your meshes from the blend file now as an FBX file. Good job. We're going to import those into our new blender scene or whatever you call it of the shoulder. Bam. And the skirt as well. Camille. There we go. Now I just go through one by one for these and I delete all the parts that aren't named Sims 4 Studio Mesh. This is because all the other parts are basically just um, the Sims 4's... Uh, sometimes you know they'll call these Sims 4 Studio Mesh, you can just delete these. Just make sure you don't delete the thing you're actually trying to edit. And sometimes they are attached to the body, in which case I just go into edit mode, press L, and select the bits that I don't need. What was I saying? Um, I was saying something. Probably not important. <laughs> anyway, you have your mesh here. Um, I'll go ahead and just hide the rake for the skirt. Oh, I just noticed I missed some of the skin here. Um, but yeah, we won't be needing the armature from The Sims 4, obviously. We're gonna save our blend file already. I'm just gonna call it tutorial outfit. Now we're going to import our base nude model. Um, I use one from this, uh, the Sims, uh, Mass Effect 2, which is a completely nude model, but that has the underwear proportions. I, uh, it's really easy to find, to be honest. You just need to look through um, the Mass Effect 2 database for, very important, this is for Legendary Edition, all right? Anyway, so the first thing we do is I'm going to unhide this rig. We're going to start with the shirt, okay? So for the shirt, we're going to press R, Z, press it 90 just to rotate the whole thing. You're going to do this by pressing on the rig, okay? All right. Then I'm going to scale it by pressing S. Is that more skin I see? I think so. Hold on, let me just make sure I delete all of these. There's no real issue for, well, there is a little bit of an issue for if you don't delete it because you'll have skin texture, not skin texture, uh, you'll be like having a random black spot there. Um, but it's not like gonna break anything, it'll just look ugly. <laughs> Alright, oops, not like that. I did that wrong. Apologies. You want to make sure that you have the rig selected for these kind of maneuvers um, simply because we're going to be using the armature a lot in what we're doing um, so it's very important that it's um, not detached from the body basically we're gonna move this around a little bit move it up and down like this sure it's semi-symmetrical with the mesh. Why was this like on the other side for some reason? I don't know. Okay, like this and move it back. There we go. When it's in a position where you think that this is somewhere, somewhat where you would like it to be on the mesh. try a couple of times if you mess up a lot like I do. <laughs> um, I resize... no I don't want to resize that anymore. Okay, so now we select the rig once again, we go into pose mode. The first thing I usually do is I hide the bones that I won't be using um, as they can just be really confusing. These are for bracelets. We don't need those. I want to keep this one that's hidden away because that's actually the hand. This one is form tangent lot. One easy way to know whether or not you want to unhide or hide uh, a certain bone is just to grab it and move it around. If it doesn't move anything, uh, you can just hide it. Oops. That's really convenient in my opinion at least. Um, these ones, for example, don't move anything on this mesh, so we're going to hide them. 
and these are for the face. We don't need those. And there we have it. Okay. So we have our mesh here. The next thing we're going to want to do is go into pose by clicking on the pose thingy. Viewport display, sticks, and in front. This is just how I like to have it. This is what Padme does, and I do everything Padme does. She is my modding mom. Um, I will leave her tutorial on how to use pose mode in the description, because that's what I learned from. Anyway, so we select these um, different bones, and we start rotating them into positions that sort of uh, align with the base nude model we imported. It doesn't need to be 100% accurate. Um, it just sort of needs to be um, in such a way where you feel like you can edit this to align with the mesh. Like so. Move this down a little bit. There we go. There's no um, specific way how you need to do this. It's really just up to your own personal preference. Um, and as such, it's one of those things where like, I can't really teach you, you just have to know. You just have to get a feel for it. Um, it's also possible once you've posed all of these bones to save that pose and then have it easily usable for future posings. I personally don't like doing that because I feel like I kind of need this process to um, really get like a feel of the mesh, if that makes sense. I need to be able to um, really know like what I moved and I also just prefer you know, choosing for myself with each one because some meshes they need a different thing than a different mesh might have needed but that's one way you could do it if you felt like it if you felt like, you know, making this process really fast quality and quantity and all that, you know but I will not be judging you either way that's not my job it's not in my job description I'm going to resize this down a little bit and this actually no not that this whole arm there we go resize these a little bit and resize the whole arm a little bit actually no yeah I only resized those portions oh wait no I didn't okay there we go All right I've got it somewhat in a position that I like. I'm going to edit a few more of these things. Maybe I'll speed this up if I know how to, but yeah. Otherwise this is just going to be really quiet. Hopefully not too awkward. I've got it in now a position where I would say this is good, uh, or rather good enough. Um, there we go. Now I've got it in a position where I would say this is good enough, or this is kind of like what I imagine. Obviously, you might be like, "Well, there's still stuff like looking out, uh, peeking out. Like, what's up with that?" Um, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, that's something I personally just do not bother trying to fix in pose mode because that just ends up making it look really ballooned. Ballooned? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's something I tend to fix in edit or sculpt mode. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we are able to fit these sleeves nice and easily onto the arm. Next up, we go into the modifier, which is under the mesh itself. We click apply, then we pr with our mesh selected, we go Alt P, clear and keep transformation. And now we have separated the mesh from its skeleton. We can delete the skeleton 
and we have the transformation kept. Alright, so next step is going to be to go into edit mode. I tend to use a select circle for this specific part. I select some of the vertices and with proportional editing I move them into the position I want. I hope I speed this process up because otherwise the tutorial will be too long. Um, but this isn't anything new. You've probably seen, if you've seen my other video, you already know what I'm doing here. I'm just moving these so that they don't clip with the mesh. So yeah, hopefully I speed this up. All right, we've got the shirt posed and formed. Look at it, it's beautiful. I'm gonna save it now. Next step is the skirt. We just repeat the same process again, rotate it by 90. I chose specifically a skirt for this process um, simply because of the fact that uh, this way I can also show you how to do multiple textures um, for a single mesh, if that makes sense. I hope it does. I'm not really gonna bother with most of these. Actually, I don't actually even need to use pose mode for this one, I just realized. There we go, we can just delete that. Uh, rotate it by 90, simply because it already fits the mesh relatively well, we can just use edit mode for that. Alright, so Oh wait, before I do that, I'm gonna edit this, but the base nude. We're going to go into this edit mode. Just gonna delete the parts of the mesh that I will not be needing. Um, this is specifically so around here with the chest and around this part with the arms. Here we go. Nice and easy. I apologize if there's a lot of mood shifting in this video. I am a hormonal bitch at all times in all things. Okay. Delete this. We want to keep around this part. There we go. Easy. Now, next up, before we do anything with the skirt, I'm going to... Oh, wait, sorry. I don't like how protruding this is, so we're going to edit this a little bit. There we go. That's nice. Okay. Um, right. We're going to import the N7 dress, or the dreaded leather dress, as I call it. Um, we're going to remove its skeleton. We don't need that. We're going to go into it. We're going to delete the majority of the body. We're going to keep the necklace because you want the necklace for. Um, hiding neck seams. Okay, go into edit mode, turn yourself a little bit to the side like this, and then you're going to have select 
and then you're going to have your proportional editing set a little bit higher you're going to move the skirt deselected so like a little bit less this time maybe I have the proportional editing too high there you go slowly but surely form it into the shape of the legs and then you want to view it from the front x-ray on put your proportional editing up a little bit and then you want to transform widen it select some bits of it transform and widen it a little bit to the side to the front you know and then uh, when it's slowly but surely kind of touching the front leg area you go into the circle select edit mode again and then select some of the vertices and then you move it oh you want to keep the proportional editing a little bit smaller this portion as always as soon as they don't touch anymore you want to deselect a couple of them and uh, you want to unselect all of them and then select only the bits that are overlapping still um, that way is the easiest way in my opinion to make sure that your mesh looks nice and even you know I oftentimes think about how difficult it must be to make these meshes simply based on the fact that it's very difficult to form them into other things so make sure to always credit the original artists and because I like my shepherd to have a little bit of a bigger booty, I like to grab, oh, like to grab the buttocks, <laughs> spend this, and then move it out a little bit. You know, give her a little bit of a bum. Oops. Uh, move this in. A little bit to avoid clipping. There we go. And now our mesh is oh almost done. I spotted a little error over here. Do I see any over here as well? Well actually several I think. Oh a good thing I double checked. Alright, go into object mode again, do a little look around of your mesh, see if you spot anything, which I do, anything like that, simply move these around, for this one I might have to go to this x-ray select mode, move these out, really doing all that much I like to see. All right. Okay, there we go. Got that fixed up. And now we are ready. Um, sorry, I always notice this. 
the N7 dress like by default has a tiny little bit of clipping here which I always notice and I just always can't look at it so I just move them back a little bit I don't even know what these are they just protrude a little bit there we go so we've got our mesh nice and ready um, there's not really much more to share about this part uh, so the next step is that we're going to combine these meshes together. Now, the first step you want to do before joining a mesh is to go into its UV map. Some of your meshes will have two UV maps from The Sims 4. You're going to go into UV editing and you're going to, in edit mode with the mesh select, press A. And then in the UV map you can see this UV map has a UV map that looks really weird and this one looks normal. So we're going to delete this one and we're going to rename it to UV underscore single in all caps. The same concept applies for this other one. Go into edit mode with it. It has two UV maps. We want to keep the one that's not messy and we name it UV single. Now every single mesh here has the exact same name for the UV map and so everyone will share one like good kids. We want to delete the vertex groups, all of them, for every single mesh, even the vanilla ones. Delete all groups and delete all groups. Then we combine the different meshes together. I combine them, uh, sorry, you have to combine them over to the one that has the Mass Effect skeleton still. Um, otherwise, you know, your mesh will be detached from the skeleton, which you don't want. Um, next step, go into... Uh, is this slightly crooked or am I going insane? I think I'm going insane. Eh, who cares. Um, go into this thing, the triangle, I don't know what it's called. You need to go into uh, material maps. Now. I don't think I explained this in my last tutorial because I didn't really understand it yet. Um, but for your material map, <laughs> excuse me, what's really important here is that this one, for example, is the body. Okay, this is going to be uh, the base nude body, and there's going to be a specific setup in your PCC that I am going to show you. But I'm not going to show you how to make your own PCC. This is just the way I do it. Okay. So the body has everything here selected that is, you guessed it, the base nude model, right? This one has the necklace and the legs from the N7 dress. So I'm going to name this one N7. This one has the, <coughs> the shirt and this one has the skirt. We're going to combine these to one because they're going to share the same texture. Okay. So if we go into our UV editing mode again, select all you can see some of our UVs kind of like overlap here and normally if you have a texture right if you only have one texture this would be a problem but we're going to have multiple textures so it's not gonna be a problem and the way this works is simple let me show you when you go into UV editing mode and you select the specific parts of your material right like the mesh that has a specific uh, it's assigned to a specific material you can see that each of these don't have anything that overlaps. Oh, that's actually not true. I think. Wait, is that true? <gasps> have I ever run into the first time ever that one of my meshes overlapped? I hope not. That would be embarrassing. Wait, let me go back. <laughs> um, because this can happen, by the way. But this just never happens to me with like body. Uh, with meshes like this. Anyway, uh, go into edit mode, select. Oh, wait, this is before I. Yeah, don't do that. Okay. No, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> well, good. I'm just paranoid. Okay, double check. Okay. You basically, you just need to make sure that when you have something like this, 
uh, that the material map here doesn't overlap with each other. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little bit afraid there for a second, but usually that won't happen. <laughs> anyway, so we've got our texture, uh, our texture, our mesh ready, but it currently doesn't have any weights, which means it would just stand like this in game, and we don't want that. So I'm going to import the N7 dress again, and this time, uh, this one, we're going to select it, we're going to select our mesh so that uh, the mesh we just imported is orange. We're going to go to weight paint, weights, transfer weights, transfer mesh data, by name, boom. Now we have weights for our mesh, which we can see when we go into weight paint and we cycle through them all and they all have weights. Very nice. Okay, that's actually all for Blender. I'm going to make a cut here. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to make a cut here in a second. Sorry, I got a little bit too excited. <coughs> We're going to export our tutorial mesh here with the same settings we did earlier. So if you don't have those, you can rewatch that part. Then we're gonna have Autodesk and UDK open. If you've watched my previous tutorial, you know about this part. I'm gonna convert it. If you don't, then rewatch my old tutorial and you will see how to do this and I will explain it, how to do this a little bit more detailed. Alright, so we import it, I'm gonna name this tut, oops, sorry, I <laughs> that's the wrong version, you need to import the FBX version, uh, the one that has been converted to FBX 2013, tut, there we go. Then you save it as whatever the hell you want, and that's it. Alright, now we're going to the tutorial part that goes over textures and materials. This is going to be the last part and then we're going to be done! Alright, so really making your textures work for um, this new method is so so much easier than anything I've done before and I'm going to show you how to do it. So we've exported the textures for um, Earlier we exported the textures for the meshes with Sims 4 Studios. Now I'm loading the PNGs up in Photoshop. I use C, uh, CS3. We're going into image size, have constraint proportions off, and we just make it 248 by 248. Fill in the background with black. Open. We open the other um, texture we exported. This one. We do the same thing here, except this one is a little bit smaller, so this one needs to be this. Okay. We fill in with black. This is very important for the second one, that you fill this in with black, because otherwise, when you do this part where you copy and paste it, instead of going in the exact same position that it was in the previous one, in the one you just copied it from, it would just appear randomly somewhere in this image. Um, then you're going to delete the black bits here like so. Careful not to delete anything that is from the mesh itself. There we go. There we go. Ah, as you can see, there's a little bit here that's still going. There we go. Now, our mesh can be flatter. Uh, our mesh? <laughs> A texture can be flattened like so and I'm going to save it somewhere I know what it is we're going to save it as tutorial diff because this is a diff we're going to save it as dxd1 you can say oops uh, you, you can save these as um, PNGs and use those I don't understand how that works works. I don't understand how the mm, <laughs> Mass Effect uh, modding tool knows how to just convert a PNG into the correct uh, 
version or whatever it does. I actually don't understand it. And because I don't understand it, I don't use it. <laughs> I use the normal map filter uh, to make my normal map. If you don't have that, I actually don't even know where I got it from. So good luck finding that. Um, yeah. Then we make a spec. We do this by black and whiting it. Turning that brightness and contrast down by quite a bit. Save it and save it as a spec. For specs you want to save it with interloped alpha. Once you have that, I close everything. And then I open the spec back up because I want to edit these channels individually. Now for each material, this way it like each material works with the specular file is a little bit different. So this is uh always kind of like how you yourself think it might be. I'm just gonna make these parts uh, black and keep this one uh, yeah keep this one um, no actually sorry I'm so dumb it's the opposite way I wanted to do this I want to keep the blue channel blank there we go okay and then I save it as spec. Now I don't actually um, have like a proper overview for each uh, spec, no for each material how it wants the spec to be. I, I would say if your spec looks like if you're uh, in, if in game, oh my god sorry, if it looks weird in game you can just experiment a little bit with your specular file. <laughs> okay next step is saving or not saving sorry is importing it into the legendary explorer. The way I do this is very specific um, and this is only how I do it for testing. It's obviously not how you would do this for if you were trying to release this as a mod. This is just my way of quickly getting a mesh in game so I can very quickly test the weights and see how it looks. So this is my uh, bar game human female arm CTH um, PCC and in this one I have this specific mesh imported. The way I did this is I went into the asset database, I found the naked mesh, I opened it up in package editor and I simply dragged it over into uh, the bar game human female arm CTH in package editor and then <laughs> I just had it, you know. You need this specifically for the way I do my materials and meshes once you understand how this works, you can kind of experiment on how to do that uh, yourself. For example, you can see here that this mesh has three materials set up. Now, this one only has one. Most, most, almost all bio, uh, Bioware game like default uh, meshes have only one material. But for mine, we're going to be using three. Why three? The first one is the texture or the material in quotation marks of simply our dress. That's the texture we just made together. The second one is the naked one here. You can simply do this by taking note of what material, the number here, right? You would copy this. Oh my god, copy. Or you would note it down or whatever. Um, and then you would go to the mesh you're trying to add an extra material to. I'm just going to show it as an example. You would click here, add array element, and then click on the extra. There would be one more here and then you would import the number and then press set. It has to be in the same order you put the materials in, uh, in Blender. For example, if you remember correctly, uh, we put the meshes, no, we put the, <coughs> we put the <laughs> textures, god damn it, in a specific, uh, not the textures, god damn it, sorry, the material maps in a specific order in Blender, where the first one was the clothes, the second one was the body and the third one was the N7 dress. Actually, it might have been the other way around. It might have been N7 first and then the body. We can always go back and double check. Um, this is really only relevant for the fact that, let's say I put this number 1737 down here and 1738 up here. This would basically swap the textures and make the dress wear uh, the skin, <laughs> which can look very frightening. Uh, let's just actually open up and have a look. Yeah, it's body and seven and diffuse map. So I completely f screwed up the order there. That's my bad. But we're just going to do that now. Um, replace mesh from UDK. 
use a tutorial mesh done as you can see here our rotation origin was wrong I don't actually know why we didn't get a warning for that we normally do uh, doesn't matter um, but as you can see here the textures are all weird looking so simply put we take the material map number <laughs> from uh, this dress already has it this mesh already has it yours probably wouldn't it's hard to explain I'm sorry if you don't understand you can always ask me a question you know if you need explanation but the body is first so this goes onto the body as you can see the um, second one needs to be 1738 and the third one needs to be 1737 if you don't know how I knew all of these things you can always open up the PCC that you're working on and then look for the material instance and then it has this number in front of it this is the one for example for the CTHJ <coughs> excuse me outfit so as you can see here the rotation origin has this weird number in front of jaw this is a very 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 common issue that happens with custom tech uh, custom meshes all you need to do is go into binary interpreter pass binary click rotation origin here go down into this yellow highlighted area press 0 all the way through save hex changes and boom if you don't do this you your game will crash once you select this mesh in game okay next up textures so uh, if you were to be making your own PCC you would need to create new TFC I just use package stores uh, stored for easy testing so we select the diff package store. if yours doesn't show up because it's a DDS you need to just uh, drop down this menu and look for it there okay package stored EDS spec save save here close this okay now we are all ready to go you just need to auto talk actually this is just an old habit of mine I don't even know if you still need to do this I'm pretty sure you still need to do this when you basically auto talk is something you need to do anytime you've edited a PCC um, so yeah anyway we're going to open up the game now and test to see our mesh I'm going to stop the recording and just like that as you can see here we have our mesh in game looking gorge um, this is usually the part where I will, you know, take note of things like weight issues, as you can see here on the bottom. Um, this would be something I would then fix before I, you know, insert it into my actual mod. You can also see on the side, there's some slight clipping with the, uh, boob, I guess, side boob, uh, armpits. These are all things that you would then fix in Blender using uh, weight. Um, you could manually paint the weight, you could use different meshes to transfer weight from. It's all about testing it out for your own, you know, um, preferences. But yeah, that's it. I hope this tutorial helped you and I hope uh, I will see you in the modding discord. Goodbye.